And welcome to the Drexel Interview. I'm your host, Paula Morantz Cohen, speaking to you from the Drexel University Picture Gallery. Today, our guest is a lawyer, economist, and diplomat, Dr. Sotiris Moussouris. Dr. Moussouris held the position of ambassador at large and special envoy of the Greek government. He has served as Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, where he was the coordinator of special economic assistance programs and representative of the Secretary General in Afghanistan and Pakistan. An expert on Greek culture and civilization, he was executive president of the organization constructing the new museum of the Acropolis in Athens. He's currently president of the Greek African Chamber of Commerce. Dr. Moussouris. Welcome to the Drexel interview. Thank you. Well, you have had an extremely wide-ranging and varied career, and I'd like to talk about various facets of it, but I'd like to start by discussing the new museum of the Acropolis. Um, you were involved in the construction of that museum, and I wonder if you tell us what state it's in right now, and what was behind its construction, and when plan will you plan to have it open to the public? I think the Museum of Acropolis will open this year, sometime around the summer or fall. And what you will see, uh, it uh, represents the museum of last year. Since then, it has been a great development. I was actually in charge of the first five years mm. uh, of when we put the foundations for uh, a museum. We had to have uh, excavations because it is... Uh, it has been constructed very close to Acropolis, 300 meters away from the Parthenon. Uh, that's the advantage of it, because of the closeness of uh, having the marbles of Parthenon next to the, the temple itself is, uh, is, is a wonderful experience. So the excavations took a long time because they had to be very careful. And we found a very interesting uh, area of Athens. Uh, and uh, all these findings, you can be seen now under the floor of the Museum of Acropolis. This is a very interesting... Uh, so the excavation uh, is there it, underneath. The excavation finished and there is uh, glass. And underneath you can ah. see what we found. It is the period of uh, Roman and early Christian uh, period of Athens. The museum started uh, being uh, built uh, in uh, about uh, oh, six years ago. And now it's almost totally ready. Most uh, of the statues and the other pieces that will be exhibited are in place. You know, they were moved in a very interesting way from uh, the Acropolis Museum in the rock. So they were moved from there to the new museum, which is, of course, uh, large and can uh, Accommodate give, uh, more than that, too. Uh, give justice yeah. to the exhibits. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you are going to be uh, also installing uh, other artifacts, obviously, as Only well. Only those that are related to the Acropolis uh, oh. area. Uh, the Parthenon uh, marbles, which is the friezes and the metops, as well as the Erechtheo, the Cariatids. So some of these marbles were taken down for the purpose precisely of being exhibited in the museum and Exactly. Not some were in the small old museum in the rock of Acropolis, and they were transported. And some were in the temple, and they were taken out to be placed in the right place in the museum. What is interesting thing about the museum, by the way, it was after an international competition that... Uh, Monsieur Chumi, who is the chairman of the architectural department of Colombia, he won the competition. He is the one who made the designs. Uh, he has provided for an area equal to the size of Parthenon mm. in the top of the museum. So the metops and the, and the friezes are exactly in uh, the place where they are, in the, they used to be, 
in the temple itself. But in a protected space. Ac exactly. Yeah, there I is see. glass. Uh, through the glass, you can see from there uh, the Parthenon. Okay, that's interesting. Well, when you As talk you about see. the marbles, it uh, you know, immediately brings to mind the Elgin marbles. And I suppose, I don't know whether you want it referred to that way, the marbles that are in uh, London and that yeah, there has can been... say <laughs> the exiled marbles. The exiled the mar exile, marbles. I wondered if there was a politically correct uh, way to refer to them. Uh, sculptures, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, which were taken in the beginning of uh, 19th century from Acropolis by Lord Elgin of the United Kingdom and are still now in the British Museum. Well, they are, I think, orphan there. Uh, this, um, the statues, these marbles, were an integral part of the monument. And I think they should be back and join their other uh, uh, colleagues, let's say, and friends, the other pieces which we have in Greece. Uh, the British Museum, for the time being, is not very positive, but I think never say never. I think uh, sooner or later, I am almost certain that the sculptures will come to Greece one way or another. Well, it's Actually, interesting. there are many ways you can satisfy the British Museum by sending from time to time other Greek uh, marbles, other Greek statues, so uh, they can be compensated for their uh, offer, which uh, should be forthcoming, uh, should be generous. Well, I know it is a controversial issue, but you are a diplomat. Well, Melina Mercuri, you know, the mm -hmm. actress and the Minister of Culture, was her dream to see the, uh, the marbles of Parthenon coming from London. She said, I will be born again if this happens. But this is something for generations the Greeks wanted uh, back because the way they were taken and the way they were removed from the temple was not the most uh, elegant or sensitive way. Well, the, this is a part of a larger issue uh, that has a lot of relevance Absolutely. to Greece. Uh, what's your view? I mean, you are a diplomat, so you have, you're an expert in negotiation. Um, do you feel that this is an issue that is yet to be resolved with the world community, the return of artifacts that were plundered from Greece during the 19th century? You, you see, this century? issue is uh, broader, not just the Greek claims. There are mm -hmm. many other countries uh, who have uh, asked for some of their treasures to be repatriated. I'm aware, for instance, that Egypt has these claims too. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the claims of Greece, we limit them only on the Parthenon marbles, on those who were part of an architectural uh, integration. Uh, integration. Mm -hmm. uh, they were taken out, they were removed, like cutting legs and limbs, etc. They should be together again. We are not claiming other Greek statues, and as you know, there are thousands all over the world in various museums. Mm from Aphrodite of Milos in uh, Louvre and the uh, Victory of Samothraki, a copy of which you have here in this beautiful building. Those belong to the museums where they are. We don't have any claims for those. So it's just the marbles that you really just have Just the marbles. And uh, I, su I suppose this type of uh, claims probably should be uh, answered. Okay. Well, you have uh, had a varied career, as I mentioned. Um, particularly uh, in your di diplomatic capacity in Africa. Uh, you headed the Center Against Apartheid for the United Nations. Could you tell us a little bit about that? You know, uh, President de Klerk, the white president of South Africa, he saw the writing in the wall that sooner or later he had to give uh, equal rights to the blacks, the black majority in uh, South Africa. And of course, South Africa had the great the great uh, luck to have Mandela. Nelson Mandela was, for me, the greatest statesman alive at this moment. And uh, he knew that uh, he could achieve that through negotiations. We helped these negotiations uh, in the United Nations, and I'm proud of the role I played. Maybe one of the reasons that uh, President Mbeki decorated me two years ago in Pretoria, it was a very beautiful event, was the only foreigner to be decorated for what I did in the struggle against apartheid and also for the development of the African continent. And we tried to make, uh, to persuade the countries, all the countries, especially the Western countries who were not uh, the governments, not uh, too keen to see the apartheid system eliminated. 
not the people, especially the American people, the English, British people, had many non-governmental organizations, very strong, very fiercely fighting for upper, against apartheid. Mm -hmm. But the governments had other interests. Mm. And uh, we managed to persuade all governments to accept a certain declaration, a concession declaration, which opened the way for the negotiations and became the basis also of the constitution of South Africa, which is a very liberal one. Also, we had uh, we, uh, this uh, whole uh, period was marked by the collapse of the Soviet Union. So the argument of the, uh, that the fact that the ANC, the liberation movement, will be influenced by Soviet Union had disappeared. So things became easier. And do you, have you been back recently? Oh, yes, yes. Last two years ago, uh -huh. I was there for the decoration. But since then, before that, I had been in several occasions, fact-finding missions, etc. How do you see the state of South Africa now? Well, South Africa, I would say, is a miracle what has happened, because it had leaders with vision, with maturity. Yeah. They saw not today and tomorrow, but next week, next month, next year. They had a, a longer view, especially Mandela and Mbeki and the clerk. So having such leaders, this is very helpful for the developments of a country in that situation. Uh, they were a very cautious in their policies, so they not, did not alienate the white minority. They stayed there. So the economy of, uh, of uh, South Africa is uh, good. Of course, all the expectations of the black majority have not been fulfilled. It's very difficult. Uh, but the previous uh, president, Mbeki, did everything he could. The only worry I have now is about the forthcoming elections and who is going to be elected uh, as president. Okay. Well, you talk about these visionary leaders yes. that you felt were so inspirational and created this miracle, as you put it. Do you see such leaders in existence today in other parts of the world? I mean, can you point to any leaders that exist that you feel are visionary well, and mature? excellence, you have a leader here. <laughs> <laughs> your new president. So you feel that you way. You can't imagine how many hopes the world has placed on his shoulders. Mm. I think President Obama is the man that we expect much. We expect justice, fairness. We expect uh, a fair development of the world. New rules of the game. In the 70s, the United Nations tried to to bring out some rules, we had an effort, we made an effort to prepare rules for the uh, activities of the transnational corporations, mm -hmm. the multinationals. And the multinationals are the vehicle of globalization to a large degree. That effort failed. I think it's time again to start seriously on international rules regarding the movements of capital, the activities of transnationals, and so on and so forth. And I think that uh, we hope uh, that uh, President Obama also will promote. And of course, uh, human rights is an a very important element, and he's very sensitive about that. Well, as a businessman, as well as a diplomat, then, you have, you know, you talk about human rights, and you also talk about policing the transnational corporations. Not policing, I would That's say to bring them word. some rules. Yes. Okay. Um, but you feel that part of the financial situation that we're in at the moment is a result of the Absol lack of that, those Absolutely. rules. Absolutely. And hopefully these will be put in place. And we should not do uh, things with aspirins because the problem will come again. Mm. I think more, more drastic uh, action is required. Well, I want to go back a little bit in time again and talk about your involvement with Afghanistan, uh, where you also were there at a very crucial and critical moment in the 1990s. I know that you have described the destruction of the museum in Kabul yes. and how heart-rending it was to see what had happened there. Could you tell us a little bit about that? As well as your diplomatic, I would like to hear about what you did in Afghanistan, but just simply the, the scene of the destroyed museum and your ability, I guess, to, to retrieve one or two artifacts? There is a Shea 